Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, um, I know it's a little late, but I uh, figured we'd we'd do a little update on the market. A lot of interesting things occurring. Um, so yesterday, whenever we spoke, it was uh, as market hours were closing here. So you were in this sort of uh, parabolic motion up in this way. And we said, if you go back to the video, that what we were expecting was some sort of double top action. That's exactly what we got here. And the reason that we thought that was because the midline was coming in um, again to act as resistance. And we saw this as likely to play out. Oh, I don't want the one minute. I want the one hour. We, want, we saw this as likely to play out as a distributive structure um, because it was holding relatively high in the range. Uh, we, we spoke that, about that at length yesterday. So, um, so we got our double top playing off of the midline. And then we said that the next thing that we were expecting was a move down uh, back towards this uh, red line of resistance that is now acting as support temporarily for the market at the time being, um, which is what you're testing right now. And the reason that we thought that that was going to happen and how we saw this playing out was that it was most likely that we were going to continue to trade uh, along this if we were to see another retest, we would have to see a more accumulative structure play out, uh, something that is rounded at the bottom, similar to what you see here, or uh, maybe the type of structure that you see here, or here on a more macro basis, or here, um, before you get marked back up, right? Because we know that there is a strong line here, this midline that we've been talking about for months at this point, um, that is a really relevant line within the larger trading range, the overall more bearish trend that we've been in for the course of the year. So what are we expecting next? Um, so going into tomorrow, what I would say we're expecting um, is more of this uh, sort of whiplashy thing and we're going to be working ourselves down to a 707 uh most likely because this is the this is what the market is kind of drawn to okay and this is going to be something that that plays out over uh basically going into next week right because what we're really looking for is an intersection where this trend is hit at the same time as one of these key Fibonacci's that we know is going to be the key level of support. Let me check my phone right quick. I got to make sure I'm not getting in trouble here. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Uh, my fiance is trying to put my son to sleep right now, so I don't want to keep them up for sure. Um, so we know that we want to see this sort of motion. If you're, if it's not clear already, what I'm describing here is these apexes, um, are going to be where you're most likely to see that sort of long-standing, and look, I can correct it a little bit for you, that more long-standing type of reversal that then, again, if you have that nice rounded structure when you're coming through here, so you don't want it to be like this sort of motion where you're kind of like holding higher and then you come back here and then you test it, that sort of thing, because that would be distributive. Okay, what you're looking for is more like this thing where it kind of hangs low within the trading range as it's doing its thing, right? And it's kind of boring people out and they don't really want to be a part of it. They're saying, oh, you know, it's going to crash. And then that is this type of motion that you want to see play out to help you get the momentum needed uh, to move through. Uh, this space. So this would be the first 707 that you'd be you'd be testing. I do think, just to reiterate my point from yesterday's video, I do think that this is relatively strong support, this red trend line. Uh, and the reason I think that is because you've already broken it before and gotten rejected back down below it. And I said this in the video yesterday, but I just want to reiterate it. Um, and now you've broken back through it again, and you've, you're testing it as support again. But generally speaking, this is a sign of strength within the market, right? Um, so if you watched the video yesterday, you, you may remember me saying that. Uh, I still do feel the same way about that. Now, 
what is um so that's kind of an optimistic view of the market right that's that's sort of uh and it and look as i've said multiple times now i do see this as more of a of a bullish structure here that we're that we're trading in but i mean until you really break through this midline you create you, you break through this uh, key trading range here that's topped out at like 38.15 that you created, right? So once you break and you retest this level and you make a new high, until you you do that, um, you still have made, right? You still have made lower highs uh, here, right? So that's a generally, that's a bearish thing. But you could say that you're trying to get your last points of support nailed down Nail down some key liquidity before you uh, try and make your press up. That's sort of why you need that that structure. Does that make sense? Hopefully, that's making sense. Um, so what's a what's a more bearish outlook? Well, let's let's do bearish bullish, right? Let's get a little bit more bearish. So then you would be pulling the the seven oh seven from here, right? And this same process could get dragged out a little longer in this fashion, right? And again, we're, we're looking for that rounding sort of momentum that hits one of these apexes, right? So maybe you trade down through here. Let's, I'm just trying to make it quicker, right? And then you, you have that sort of structure, okay? So you get that deeper retracement that would bring you all the way back down to 3580, um, which I... You know, I will say that uh, you'd still be in pretty good shape here. I would say it's pretty deep of a retracement. You'd, you'd be testing the bottom of this previous accumulation range, which in a way would be uh, invalidating it. But I, but you could also make the case that you'd be developing a new accumulation range. And on the larger scale, this, this would probably uh, then turn this into a phase B distribution. And then this would be an LPS through phase C uh, with Wyckoff. I need to make like... Uh, Wyckoff tutorials or something like that because sometimes I feel like I'm speaking like another language that the common <laughs> the common viewer might not be understanding what I'm saying but but if you're not understanding what I'm saying uh, and you search Wyckoff theory there's uh and I'll, I'll link it down below there's a uh, there's a website there's like a one pager that kind of goes through like the main phases of Wyckoff I'm referring to accumulation here I can show you the schematic right quick uh there's, there's a good one there. Um, that's just one example of the, the basic Wyckoff accumulation schematic. And I was talking about last point of support, which is this LPS that you see uh, in phase C or phase D. You can see it there. Um, so that's that's basically you're, gener you're establishing new support, creating new lower highs, lower lows. I mean, lower lows really are the more, more important thing as you're pressing up higher and higher, right? All right. So what is an overall more bearish outlook? If at any point, okay, what I'm, what I'm talking about right now, from a bullish standpoint, okay, if at any point from the time that this video is done recording, literally, it could be happen, literally you're testing this line now, okay? This could literally happen, happen as this video is going on. It could happen as the video is uploading, okay? So... Make sure that you're drawing this line accurately, okay? You have your, your main three points are up here, right? You tap here, here, and here, right? Um, and then you draw it straight down to this midline test here, okay? If at any point... There's gonna be there's gonna be a couple things a couple criteria here that's gonna make this bearish okay bearish AF. <laughs> um, if at any point you break down below this support trend, you retest it and you make a lower low. It's very bearish, okay. And you, again, you're in the type of scenario where things can get very ugly very fast okay like i mean once you invalidate this support again it is you are in a really weird situation where suddenly you really need to hold this 3644 as support here and you see that was kind of where i drew that initial push down if you make a new low on this man 
you're probably going to come back up one more time, fake bulls out, and then you're going to, I mean, you're going straight to 3550. And you you better hope that you hold that as support because if not, you're getting sent to... If you're getting sent to oblivion <laughs> down all the way here to like 3400 okay so that would be like the very bearish scenario and uh you would hear about it on the news <laughs> because it would happen in like within the next week or so uh is when that would happen okay just you know something uh something to take note of uh, and we could we could do like a more a more bullish scenario, and this is this is very unlikely in my opinion, but it is possible. Um, maybe some good news breaks or something like that, and then you start to generate these really quick higher highs in this way, okay? And then you you break up like this. Once you once you break this midline, and this is kind of the scenario that we that we talked about yesterday, only without this double top in here, because we were saying that we really thought that you, there was no way you're going to break through here. Um, but if you were to come back, test this as support, and then make a new high, this midline, and make a new high above it, uh, again you would be back on the news, but this would be really happy news. <laughs> Like, everybody would be very happy because over the course of the next, like, two or three weeks, you would see, like, an incredible rally uh, up to 39.67 most likely in this way. This is probably this 707 if I had to guess, yeah. Um, so from, from that swing high to that swing low. Um, and then from there, we would kind of see what's going on. But at that point, it would be pretty uh, relatively high probability that you would work your way um, into this uh, this red, more bearish, uh, the, the overall bear trend uh, that we have here. That's this red rectangle up here. Let me make it a little bit brighter for you so you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where we stand on the market. As far as tomorrow, uh, I am expecting... Uh, what do we expect tomorrow? Tomorrow... I think you could have a little pop up tomorrow. Um, you know, right now futures is down 0.47 percent, um, but you're on this really key level of support. I think it's quite unlikely that you just break right through it here. I could be wrong on that. Um, like I said, you're literally testing it right now, but I think that there's a good probability that you begin to to make one of these. Uh, these pushes so let, uh, let me draw that a little bit more accurately sorry um let's see tomorrow is thursday okay so i think that let's see let's let's assume that this is the bottom yeah i don't think you're gonna go that that freaking high but uh i think that what you could see occurring i mean look the, and this would be bearish if this were to happen <laughs> ironically I mean, short term, it would be bullish, but you could see yourself over the course of the next like few days, like the next few sessions, tomorrow, Friday, and into Monday, Tuesday, um, work yourself up to this sort of apex. And it's not going to be a straight line like that. It's going to be more of like this choppy sort of motion here, right? But that would be bearish, okay? Because that is kind of similar to the to what we just uh, just described, and it's a little top heavy in nature. And I would actually be expecting you to get rejected back down again if that was what you you ended up doing. Um, and then that would require even further retracement, um, you know. In which case, you would you would be pressing further down. Uh, and then retesting this trend, but then it would be like you know a few weeks later, and it's a pretty steep trend. So you'd be down here in in, uh, in a pretty pretty low price range compared to where you are now. But I do think as far as like tomorrow, it's actually pretty likely tomorrow and Friday um, that maybe you see this sort of price action occur here. Okay, so not the most exciting thing ever, I know, but uh, I'd say that through like Monday. I would sort of expect this sort of motion, and this would be a little bit more friendly for long-term bulls in the market. Um, and then hopefully what would happen if you're like still trying to be bullish 
and hope for the best and hope that the world doesn't end is then you would press down in this fashion and begin to work your way into that more accumulative structure and make Twitter hate the market and think that the market's going to zero over the course of the next few weeks and then uh, make your press up and then the bull the bear market uh, it would be a pretty good chance at that point that the bear market would be over, but it's not truly over until you make a higher high. Um, so that would then that look, that's quite the big test. Okay. Like, I mean, you're talking about, I'm, I, I'm just, uh, I'm obviously just like, like this is, uh, that would take, it's going to take time. It's not like you're going to make a higher high, like on the overall market, like <laughs> immediately it would take like weeks uh, to months, but you know, um, you could press up here to this 4387, therefore making a higher high on this move here. Um, and then that would pretty much trigger a pretty big, um, Elliott wave structure, which would, which would then, uh, most likely lead you to pretty, uh, pretty, pretty bullish stuff. Um, but that would be over the course of, like into Q1 next year or something like that. Uh, bullish action, like 2023 bulls uh, would get their higher high. And then from there, we'll see. We'll see where it takes us. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the market. Um, that's how I see it. I know it's late. Uh, so I know a lot of the normal viewers are going to miss this video or hopefully you catch it in the morning um, or something like that. Uh, the day just kind of got away from me today, you know. I'm, yeah, I've told you guys before, I'm a great YouTuber. So I always I always stick to the schedule. You know what I'm saying? I always do what I'm supposed to do. I upload every day I'm supposed to. Uh, and that trend continues, right? I'm perfectly posting this at the extremely correct time. 